Good day everyone, my name is Moralda and I'm an Addictions Counsellor at Tranquility Clinic. Uh, my topic today that I want to speak about is um, the link between childhood trauma and addiction. Um, studies have shown that there is a direct correlation between childhood trauma and addiction. So normally when I say the word trauma, people think of sexual or physical abuse. That's not necessarily the only trauma that I'm talking about. Our first trauma experience as a child is normally between our primary attachment uh, relationship. That's between our mother or our caregiver, our primary caregiver. When a child reads off an adult that the adult is stressed or the adult is angry, automatically the child blames themselves. Automatically the child turns that onto themselves and says that I'm the reason why. They're not doing it consciously, they're doing it unconsciously. Um, and this then teaches a child from a very young age how to shut down his or her emotions in order to keep the adult happy. What a child wants at, at birth, it wants to be loved unconditionally. But if it sees that you are angry or you stressed, it reads those stresses and then the brain begins to shut down to enable the child to meet your need not you meeting the child's need and this is th these are some of the simple traumas other traumas that are studied over a while is um, the trauma of going to grade one for the first time this is very traumatic for potential addicts and alcoholics uh, because as addicts and alcoholics we, we always feel like we don't belong we always feel like we're on the periphery of a circle so going to grade one for the first time is extremely traumatic and a lot of people I've worked with, their parents leave them by the gate. Please parents hear me. This is, I'm not finding any fault with your parenting. I'm just stating facts. Leave the child by the gate and say, go in and the child cries and is teased. And this is extremely traumatic. The second trauma a child can suffer is when they have to move schools. So they've done the grade one thing, they found their friends, they found their place in the classroom, and then they have to move schools. They have to relive that first day at school all over again, and they're not equipped to handle it because us as parents are so busy putting house and home together, we're not sitting down and explaining to our children, you know, why the shift and making sure that they're prepared for the shift. Another thing is bullying. Um, especially for South African males, being bullied at school. 90% of the guys that I've worked with that have been bullied don't feel that they have the freedom to go home and tell someone that they were bullied because of the repercussion of them being called sissies or whatever the case may be. So they swallowed, they swallowed their fear. And every morning, this child has to dress himself up, psych himself up to go to school and face the bully and have nobody to talk to about it. These are all traumas that later on in life may give in to the disease of addiction, may begin addiction. So from birth, I'm swallowing my emotions because I'm reading my mother's stresses. From uh, six years old, I'm afraid to go to school and I'm afraid to tell someone because they, they're not going to understand. Then I'm bullied. By the time this child gets to grade eight, this child has been taught how to swallow its emotions. This is why the disease of addiction is a brain disease. The, the brain actually finds new ways to deal with stress that it shouldn't be at that early age. But as a coping mechanism, the brain has to do that. The child needs to learn how to go into self-preservation, needs to learn how to shut itself down because it's so afraid of getting hurt. So by the time it gets to uh, 10, 11, 12 years old, somebody introduces him to weed. That's it. This thing just takes everything away all the fear, all the pain, all the hurt. So drugs and alcohol, yes, they are the major um, symptom of active addiction. But what drugs and alcohol do, they medicate the child's pain. They medicate the adult's pain. It's a, it, it's a pain medication that helps them to be able to deal with life. Without it, they can't see life. I'm going to use an example of a heroin addict because that's, that's, like, that's like up there 
with getting off heroin. So a heroin addict that uh, I've read up on and, and, and followed, they had a very toxic childhood. There was no love, no love given to this child. The bare minimum was given to this child. The first time this child, this person tried heroin, this is what they said. It felt like a warm hug. They'd never had any. So to try and separate a heroin addict from the a warm hug, it's almost an impossibility. It's almost an impossibility. So in, in, in the counseling that we give, in the counseling that we give, albeit online or face to face, we want to know not why the addiction. I want to know why are you in pain? Why do you need to medicate your pain with drugs and alcohol? If I can get, help you get to the root of your pain and we heal the pain, the addiction will take care of itself. But as long as there's still childhood trauma running around inside of you, it's going to be very difficult for you to live a life of recovery. What does recovery mean? Recovery means to get back. It means to recover. Recover what? Recover my innocence. Recover my relationship with myself. Active addiction is a disconnection from self. First we disconnect from our caregivers, then we disconnect from ourselves. If we can find out what caused the disconnect, then presenting you with counseling as far as leaving drugs is concerned becomes a much easier process for you, the addict. And we can do this online. We don't have to do this face to face. We can do this in an hour's counseling session where you and I are just going to sit and talk. I just want to know what your childhood was like. And from there, we're going to be able to pick up where the disconnect actually started. So I call it, uh, I call it the growing down. So I take the adult and I grow you down to the age of three or four, whenever the, the, the tragedy happened. And then I grow you back up to be the man or the woman that you are. So that you are emotionally the same age as you are now. Because trauma causes us to be emotionally three or four years old, even though we're 40 years old. So this is what we need to do. We need to grow you down, take you back down, and then grow you back up so that you can begin to handle life as an adult. Addicts throw tantrums, we want things our own way, just like a child. That's because that's where our emotions are locked. It's locked in that trauma. There's two types of trauma. One is simple trauma. This is when you see something once, like something happens to you once. Complex trauma is when you're living in the trauma, like living constantly with an alcoholic father. You, <clears throat> you know when he opens the gate, you know when he's there. You know that you've got to go into shutdown, run into your room, hide. You, so this is complex trauma. You keep on being traumatized over and over again. And the only escape you can find is drugs and alcohol, because then you can shut out the chaos. You can shut out the noise. And lots of times, lots of times, when I work with people, and especially when we're doing step four and we're working on resentment, a lot of boys who come from abusive backgrounds believe that their biggest resentment is towards their father. It isn't. It's towards the mother for not leaving. Now, this is what we work on. We work on the underlying issues, not on what you're saying on the surface. What you're saying on the surface, you've been saying for the longest time. I want to hear what you're not saying. That's what I want to hear. And then we heal the mother wound because Mother, protector, you were supposed to protect me from this, mommy. You didn't protect me from this. Why didn't you leave him? But as adults, we're so scared to have those conversations. We think we're disrespecting our mother. When you work with me, we ask those questions. No disrespect to your mom. No disrespect to your dad. This is about you, the adult child that needs to heal. In order to heal, we have to start telling the truth. We have to start, stop sugarcoating what we went through. We have to start telling ourselves the truth.